Hi, everyone. Before we get to the episode, we want to take a moment to address the June 24th Supreme Court decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. This decision stripped away the legal right to have a safe and legal abortion. Restricting access to comprehensive reproductive care, including abortion, threatens the health and independence of all Americans. This decision could also lead to the loss of other rights. To learn more about what you can do to help, go to podvoices.help. We encourage you to speak up, take care, and spread the word. The link to podvoices.help will be in the details of this episode. Hey, it's us again, Deconversion Therapy, and here is the second half of the Duggars um, multiplying and then having fiascos with our friend Mo from TikTok, and I'll put her link in the details, but I'm just going to let it play. Please find us on all the social media apps, rate and review, and thank you guys for listening. Here you go. And we're back. Um, <laughs> hello, Mo. We're back with you. Hello. Bonnie is dead. But <laughs> Bonnie's... Well, <laughs> I'm the idiot who's who doesn't know um, what's happening with Josh. I see oh, him on okay. the front of the we're Inquirer learning. at the grocery store, but I don't Ooh, read buckling. the article. <laughs> so... How did they discover that he was abusing his sisters? Yes. Oh, God. So, Poor babies. Oh, trigger warning. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, guys, this is, this is going to be a pretty rough episode. I yeah. just, just letting you all know now. Um, I'm going to try to not crack too many jokes and still keep sensitive, but damn, is it going to be hard. So um, it was discovered that... Now, there's a bunch of stories running around. Supposedly, Josh went to his parents one night and admitted that he had been touching his siblings, his older okay. sisters. Or they were all younger than him, but the older of the sisters, yeah, right. some of the older ones. Um, and that it had been, whether it was over clothing, over blankets, under mm -hmm. clothing and blankets, but it had happened while they were sleeping and they did not know, but he supposedly went to them on their own accord. He went to okay. them, his parents on their own accord, and he admitted to it. Oh, okay. Now, okay. there's other um, rumors saying that one of the, and this has not been confirmed, but that one of the sisters, Jill, actually woke up while he was doing it and, like, hit him, and she ran into the parents. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, it was testified during Josh's trial that... He supposedly told his parents what had happened. And at mm -hmm. first they're saying, okay, well, they're going to get, you know, they're going to get him help. They're going to try to send him to a kid's camp, a camp for troubled teenagers to learn to be better soldiers of Christ and be better, good, godly right. men. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to get the daughter's help. Remember, they're getting the daughter's help, supposedly. We're going to get back to that. Yeah. So then it comes out again that now he'd done it again. He went and admitted to them again. Only this time he had, I'm trying to find the words, um, digitally penetrated oh. one of his sisters who was five years old at the time oh. while, she was, while she was sitting on his lap during family Bible time. Of course. Oh. Okay. Like on the, they're all sitting on the couch and he had... You know, again, this is what I'm talking about. There's a lot of kids. You can't... How, yeah. yeah. All right. So they claimed that they got the Duggar. The Duggars claimed that they got the girls' help, and they felt that really there wasn't a ton of help to be done because it had all happened in their sleep, and they didn't know that it had happened um, um, because it was in their sleep. So right. they were more traumatized finding out that it had happened. Cut to the trial, yeah. and word is getting around very heavily that the sister that was digitally penetrated did not know that that had occurred. She found that out during the trial. Her parents what? had not told her what had happened. So, oh my God. so years had probably passed, and now yes. she has more of an awareness of what that means. Yes. So oh. people forget that you can form memories that your brain will try to push out as a self-preservation um, mm -hmm. mechanism. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
And for you to go to therapy and go through counseling, which is an amazing thing, but you have to be completely honest and open with your therapist, with your mental health professional, and they have to know everything for you to get proper help and to guide you through the whole situation, help you work through it. She, the young, that daughter um, could not have gotten the proper help and the full help if her parents did not tell her. Right, right. So at that age. How much, especially that age. Yeah, so yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, in a way, it's almost, in my mind, thank goodness that she didn't know, that she didn't remember. But then to find out later in court that that is what had happened. Yeah. It's kind of like you were sleepwalking yeah. and something happened and you're like, what? I was there for that? And I mean, as someone terrifying. who sleepwalks, it's absolutely, I've been, oh, oh my God. But I can't imagine, like, so that, yeah, I mean, this is the theme that we have in the evangelicals. We could go over how many youth pastors have been arrested for dolly booping and doing different things. And, but there is no real number because it's all like, let's keep this between ourselves. And the same thing in families. That was because in all they trial. need is God's forgiveness. His God has highlighted that. Yeah. Mm. That's, I, it is, there's you know, no big board to be accountable to. So the right. woman that actually, talked to the judge and he, she testified about how everything had happened and what Josh had done as a kid. Uh, she was a character witness. Her name was Bobby Holt. Her husband, uh, Jim Holt ran for, uh, Senate and lost. Um, mm-hmm. and he felt that it was due to sit in the camp because Josh was working on the trial or was working on his campaign. Pardon me. And oh, yeah. their youngest daughter, one of their daughters was, uh, in a courtship betrothed to Josh Everyone thinks that Anna was his first little girlfriend, and that is not the case. The reason their courtship ended is because the second time that Josh was found, and whether he admitted or one of the daughters turned him into touching his sisters, Mm -hmm. they called in the Holtz, and they had a conversation where Josh had to explain everything that had happened. So years later, for another unrelated incident, uh, we don't know what it was, but she said it was unrelated, Josh Mm -hmm. was talking to Bobby about what he had done to his sisters, and that's where she found out about the digital penetration of his sister. So she's testifying (sighs) in court against Josh, and because Jim Holt was also a uh, count, he was also a pastor, um, he claimed that the uh, judge, not the judge, the Josh's defense team, holy smokes, was claiming that this testimony should not be allowed. And there was a whole pretrial hearing for it because, uh, you know, that's uh, confidential between a, uh, you know, confessions between a preacher and a uh, someone who what? was part of their church. Yeah, so they were claiming that. And to which the prosecutor's like, um, no, he did not say anything to Jim Holt. He said stuff to Bobby, and Bobby is the one who is testing, is testifying. The wife yeah. is the one who is testifying, and he told this directly to her. So it's not something that, you know, her husband told her and she's saying it. And they go, well, anyway, they were acting in a religious sense, and um, they shouldn't have to do the mandated reporting because in our belief, in the, his belief system, mm-hmm. they do not go to the police. They do not go get outside help. They right. keep it within the church and they do uh, the religious counseling, which then gets real fun because we find out that the uh, state trooper that the uh, Duggars sent Josh to to have a stern talking to him about how he can't continue doing this with his life. He is currently serving time in jail for possession of child sex abuse material himself. Holy and, look what jo- and look what Josh got convicted of. Oh, okay, so here's figure. a question for you. Was mm-hmm. was any of his trial televised, or how did you get all the news about it? So it was not televised. Um, okay. I've been hearing it on TLC. a little red <laughs> curly head peeking in the windows of the courthouse. Oh my gosh, there was no subtlety in me. I grew up in courtrooms. My aunt's a lawyer. She's a very, very successful lawyer. Uh like nationally ranked on the NIU law board, Northern Illinois University uh, School mm-hmm. of Law Board until she moved. Uh, when she quit her past job, um, the woman from Making of a Murderer, that lawyer wanted to hire her. Like Maya does her stuff. Oh, yeah. So I've been sitting in courtrooms my entire life. I'm very comfortable. I would have just barged right in there and went, let's go, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. So, but in episode 12, Josh, didn't <laughs> you say while you were doing the potatoes? So yeah. what ended up happening was... Um, it was a federal trial because it was involved with the Department of Homeland Security. They are the ones mm-hmm. who discovered through all the geo-tracking of the files that and the electronic tracking that it went to Josh's computer. 
what ended up happening. Oh. And we're talking about pornography, everyone. Yes. Child pornography. Yes. yes. It was okay. the most vile file pretty much anyone has ever seen. Um, the person who oh. created the file, uh, it was done in the Philippines. Um, the Philippines does not have the death penalty, but they contemplated bringing it back just to enact it on him. And then they would have taken it off the books wow. again. Mm. It was, wow. it was yeah. that bad. So, mm. um, it's a federal trial and a lot of times federal trials are not televised. They can be. Um, mm. but the judge did say that it would have been a very, very poor decision to have a televised considering what the content was. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. can you imagine flipping through the channels or like your kid is flipping through the channels trying yeah. to find Nickelodeon or Disney channel and they come I across cannot. that or someone who's yeah. maybe gone through that as a kid, they flip through and they, that would be horrible. Um, and it's, it's not suited for TV. And then because yeah. of some of the, uh, evidence, unfortunately that the jury did have to see, um, just that itself would not be, that would not be okay to air on television. Um, or do he or even, in life? Do, in no, general. Yeah. that yeah. is, it's a horrible thing that that content was created, but then to have, that's someone's most vulnerable, low down, horrible moment. And True. to have people watch that or hear it or whatever it is, who don't even the to. jury oh they're traumatized yeah. i'm sure yeah yeah i yeah. obviously haven't seen those files but i know what's in them um right. i didn't sleep for days i went to a therapy appointment after that and i used to mostly therapy appointment like talking through what i had seen and how it was messing me up um mm-hmm. so and now to know that those poor members of the jury are now traumatized and they had to go through it yeah. and they had to see it i feel bad for them so it would not have been televised um just for a myriad of reasons, and I wholeheartedly agree with it. But the media was allowed in there, so they could go in and take notes, and they'd run back out during breaks, or they'd run out during whatever, and then they would okay. spew all the information. They'd get it online, they'd type up their articles, and then it would get posted. So I was on so many different news websites, consistently pressing mm-hmm. refresh. I was on people's Twitter pages who were there at the trial. Mm-hmm. Um I, I'm a server and I work a mix between day and night shifts and it changes every week. Um, yeah. By the grace of God, Buddha, flying spaghetti monster, whatever you want to call it. I worked mainly night shifts that entire trial. In fact, I think I only worked day shifts. I don't know how because I did not request it um, on the weekends when they didn't have the trial. So I was at home all the time, consistently pressing Glued. refresh on my computer. So it was a whole, I was on it. Yeah. I can't. I mean, you did a great job because I would always see you doing lives or people asking you stuff and you'd be like, okay, so so so-and-so went in, but we see her here and she is doing that. I'm like, you are on it. Okay, so let me back up, if I can, to when he was first found out and he's like a teenager. Right. And he got punished. Yes. This part I do remember what their punishment was. The parents? Yeah. What the parents parents did to Josh. Yes. So they shaved his head. And you can see, and he got shaved his head as a symbol of guilt. And he got sent to an IBLP camp. Um, There's a few of them they have. And it was to teach boys to be good, strong men in Christ. And to... There's not necessarily, it's not 100% proven that this place uh, is necessarily a uh, was it a conversion therapy place, but there are right, rumors that right. people do send their kids there to give it a conversion therapy type of mm-hmm. air. That's not what they right. specialize in. That's not what they advertise. Um, but they do that. They shaved his head. They sent him to the, uh, to the one state trooper to give him a stern talking to on why this is not okay. Um they did a whole bunch of Where'd stuff. Where'd they dig him up? I don't know. But it's funny because he was di- Josh was digging ditches. He was helping to dig ponds with some mm-hmm. family members like landscaping business. And he was digging holes in the dirt with a shaved head. Right. What they right. did not do, however, is report any of this to the police. And none of this was found no. out until after the statute of limitations had expired. Yeah. Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, God. that's it. You know, we've got to bury it until that time. And to keep 18 other mouths closed, like the guilt that those kids, like my whole sibling relationship is based on telling on each other <laughs> to this yeah. day. Like, I, yeah. how, 
how they got control like that of making sure those kids, you know, didn't say anything if they knew. Well, I, I assume ways. some. Yeah, they blanket train their kids I, from day one. That's they are very, very well obedient. They are raised from the time. Yeah. They go through exercises. Um, it's in a book that the Duggars push called "To Train Up a Child" by Debbie and Michael Pearl, where they will mm-hmm. literally. Oh, that that's some demented videos there. I have a Bonnie copy. and I yeah. did what's, something wait, what's on them again? before. They're the ones that did the discipline where you know you spank the kid until until their the will kid is stops broken. whatever it's doing. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. and there was, like, a video, and he's, like, an old man, and he shows hitting a really scary doll thing. I know. Poor Bonnie. Uh, What's what's the book called? So the book is called To Train Up a Child. I actually have a copy of Mm -hmm. it on my dresser over here next to me. Um, And it's basically how to break a child's will. And they use that phrase, to break a child's will, um, Mm -hmm. from the time they are tiny, tiny babies, so that they will blindly obey the parents. Um, the infamous thing that they do is called blanket training, where once a kid is old enough yeah. to like get on a blanket and move around, the parent tries to entice the baby off the blanket with toys and affection and all sorts of, well, the baby comes over, but they need to learn to occupy themselves and entertain themselves and stay on that blanket. So they come off that blanket and they get hit. And it goes and goes yeah. and right. goes until that baby learns to sit on that blanket. So when mom and dad it's like say... like an invisible fence for a dog. So when mom and dad say, right. oh, it's blanket time, and they sit a kid down on a blanket, give it a toy, they will stay there for hours. And I bet wow. in their 20s, you could throw a blanket and say blanket time, and they would run there with fear. Because, yeah. yeah, are they trained? Are they just, yeah, afraid? So the blind obedience has been a part of their family no matter what. Um, Which yeah. you know there's more <laughs> secrets. And these secrets are bad enough. But you know there's more buried. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, they kept it so ice, like insulated within the family that their mm-hmm. cousin Amy, who has been on the show, she was the rebel dugger, um, and she's speaking out a lot against her family now, against her aunt and uncle. She did not know that Josh had done that to his sisters until it had happened. Yeah. Which I would be, if I was a parent, I'm saying, like, hey, your cousin did this. We spent a lot of time with this family. Like, this happened way before the TV show was a thing. So, like, I would be... That's a, that's a vault, and she, was, and she was on the show. Mm-hmm. She was on the show, and she was shown having fun mm-hmm. with her cousins. And this whole incident happened before the show. So, if I... That was my kid. First of all, they would not be around them. Uh, but number two, yeah, I would mm-hmm. be explaining to them, hey, your cousin did this. If you are going to be hanging around with them, you know, this is what you need to know. This is what you need to look out for. You need to be made aware of the situation so you can make the best decisions and keep safe. Amy had no idea. So then, so then the parents must have kept it from the aunt and uncle. They did. Oh my god! They did. Wow. Now, I mean, who tells though? Like, who I would know. tell something that shameful? I, I know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what? Wasn't there now? Jim Bob himself. Uh, I'm obsessed with him in a weird way, but. Wasn't it's there the something hair. funky with his father? <laughs> it's the hair. It's his hair. It's his hair. Well, describe yeah. what his hair looks it's, like. Well, first of all, it's a toupee. It's a gym bob. It's a toupee, first of what? all. Is what? Is that a toupee? So it is not 100% <laughs> confirmed, but there are pictures of Jim Bob going into court for his son's trial, and you see normal, you know, short, short right. hair at the bottom, you know, hair's longer on top. Uh, you can call it a comb over from hell. There's videos of him on the TV show spraying it down with... <laughs> oh my god oh my god but there is a very distinct oh, got to be glued <laughs> aquanet you know i can't even talk shit about aquanet i love aquanet but like there is a very distinct line around his head yeah. where the longer hair overlaps the shorter hair so yeah. right i mean i went to cosmetology school i worked for a great clip where i had to do like impeccable men's cuts in a matter of 10 minutes um i know how to blend men's haircuts so he either got the world's shittiest haircut for his son's <laughs> trial like you would have gone back and like gotten that fixed up because there's no way he could yeah, have seen yeah. it or it was a toupee yeah like people make fun of donald trump's hair all they want which is fine i think it is very well deserved but like if you want to make fun of hair screw donnie go to jim bob it's one of those <laughs> oh it's one of those <laughs> oh their hair so but wasn't was his father a little something oh yes is there any 
So what? Jim Bob's father, um, Jimmy or something like that, his father, whose uh, name, I'll start with a J, I forget his name. He wasn't around a lot. He would, uh, he was a car salesman. He tried to sell a bunch of things and he was never particularly good at it. And there's actually a story Jim Bob tells. I'm not kidding. Like he would sell vacuums. He tried to sell cars. Um, like there's specifically mm-hmm. a story that Jim Bob tells in his first book, how he has vivid memories of there was one day where the family had nothing to eat for breakfast, like nothing in the house. Uh, so the yeah. mom found a jar. It was like a decorational a decorative jar of rice, like pretty rice. And that was their decoration. And she boiled that up and they had rice for breakfast that day. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. And he was just a whole mess of everything. In one of the episode, the earlier episodes of like 19 Kids and Counting or 17, maybe it was a special. He's on TV saying that he thinks that they're nuts for having that many kids. Sorry, that was Michelle's dad. But uh, he wasn't around a lot. He, very poor business practices. And Jim Bob, mm-hmm. he said as a kid, he goes, I see my dad and I don't want to be like that. And I'm going to be better at business. And as it turns out, it came out a few months ago was before the trial that he actually served some time in jail for, I think it was some sort of like business fraud or or like Jim Bob's dad. dad, Yes. For poor business dealings or something that he actually spent some time in jail. I could have sworn that I could have him mixed up with someone else that he was doing something a little iffy himself with people, but I've heard rumors. I, I get a lot of um, all of these charlatans mixed up in my little head sometimes. <laughs> okay, so let's go back right. now to the trial. Well, first, how did they? How did it come out that um, Josh had stuff on his computer in the first place? So they had initially found yeah. it because this file that's on the internet. I am not going to give out the name out of just respect for the victims and the people that were in it. Um, Mm -hmm. infamous file, like for a while before people, it really started getting around people who created this content or viewed this type of content. Didn't think that something that cruel could exist and thought it was just an urban legend. Big oops. Um, so, um, what the internet was able to do, what, uh, the the FBI and all the Interpol and everyone, they were able to put almost like a chip on it. They were able to embed something in the coding Uh. to where they could tell when it was downloaded. And they were able through Uh all the internet was, is all the technological stuff pinpointed to coming from Jim, from Josh's, uh, computer in his car lot that he owned. That's how he was making money with his family. Um, so they did that. And then the department of Homeland security did a raid on the, house on the car lot about a year and a half ago so they ran the car mm-hmm. lot and word got out they didn't know what it was for we just heard that there was a raid somewhere on Duggar property oh wow and jim bob and michelle put out this big statement on to their knowledge like that no one had any raids in their house done nothing was done on the their they called the big house the big house mm-hmm. they bought from the kit uh they hadn't done that uh none of their businesses that no one part of their family was under any sort of an investigation lies Mm-hmm. Big lies, huge lies. <laughs> like we're just getting recordings of Josh's interview with Homeland Security the day of the tr- like the day of the uh, raid. We're getting audio of that being right. leaked now that's being released. Like huge lies, okay. huge lies. So hold on, he could have been John Q. Public and he would have been raided. Yes. This was not an attack against. It didn't matter that he was. It was nothing to do with his uh, fame. Well, what's funny or is no, or who he at was. At some point, Anna actually it was rumored. It has one hundred percent confirmed, but yeah. Anna was apparently going around initially saying that this was some attack against her family and the Christian religion and good Christian people by the Biden administration, that that's what this whole thing was. Oh, that's right. Anna is yes. the wife. But, I, I heard but that, too, fact, that Biden was like, you know what I want to do? I want to go after the Duggars. That's what I want to do while well, I'm in Well, because they love being persecuted. That's what we've talked about before. But it could seem mm-hmm. that Biden was concerned their Lord and Savior Donald Trump was the president uh, that was... In office when they had the car raid going on in the first right. place. God. So. Exactly. Uh, are they known to follow him or be supporters of They him? are. The whole of family Trump? is very much so conservatively. Uh, they're very politically conservative. Um, they've always mm-hmm. ran very Republican. Uh, Jim Bob just did a... Uh, he ran for state uh, representative. Didn't go over well. He ran for state senator. Didn't oh, that's that's swamped right. out that one big time. Couldn't make it past the primaries. He tanked. Uh, but, I mean, during the 
most recent election, um, there were mm-hmm. Trump flags in the front of the family house. Uh, one okay. of them, one of the sons must, he, uh, they mowed in like MAGA or Trump 2020 or something like that no. in their front right. lawn. And they posted pictures of it over, uh, like an overhead view of that. They probably did with the drone. It, All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So this is what it gets to me. I need a sign that says Jim Bob for whatever. You know, the ones that people were putting in their right. front yards. I need to get a hold of one. I need it badly. Oh, like so a if political finds um, one. His political campaign advertising sign. campaign. Well, the thing that okay. keeps like all the lawn signs because they want to save everything and find use for it. They had a bunch of them left over from when Jim Bob had his first run as a state representative, and the kids would use those as sleds. <laughs> like when it would rain, and it would snow in Arkansas. They would oh they would go God. to a hill uh, on their family property. And <laughs> Jeremiah Jedediah, just go get Daddy's old campaign slides. Slides. on the uh, on one of their specials or oh shows. God. There's so many of them, That's and there's hilarious. a bunch of little kids rolling around Did- on their dads, like the little plastic lawn signs. And they're skeeting down. Wow. I mean, that's ingenious. Going down the M of MAGA. That's genius. <laughs> did, did they realize oh calling their house the big house has such slavery connotations? Or did they not? <laughs> well, now not only is it slavery no, connotations, okay. now it's a jail connotation. Prison. Is in the <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Actually, he's waiting for a sentence. So, he's okay, not in so the house. He's in the back shed right now. He's at the, he's ca- not he's at the county yet. jail. He's not in prison yet. Oh. He's just in jail waiting. Oh, I like that's that, such though, because yeah. that's like being outside at the principal's office. So the other part of it was that, all right, he's married. He was also on the Family Research Council yes. that was started by James Dobson, for listeners out there who remember all that bullshit. And that... I mean, we're, that's why Bonnie and I have this freaking podcast, because Bonnie would say, I just don't know if enough is going on for us to talk about. <laughs> I'm like, every day, like the, the leader of the conversion therapy got, uh, thing comes out as gay, oh, yeah. you know, research council guy gets put in jail for child pornography. Yeah, so- they're all so full of shit. So he goes to Family yeah. Research Council. Like across the uh, He starts working for them. Okay. They move out to D.C. And he gets, whether he resigns or got, gets booted out, regardless for the Ashley Madison scandal, he was found during an Ashley Madison leak that he was mm-hmm. using the website to uh, have affairs. Uh, he comes out saying that he has an addiction to pornography. Josh? Yes. Uh, he releases oh, a statement God. saying that he... Uh, saying that you know he was unfaithful to his wife he has an addiction to pornography uh and that he was seeking out help so then he flies out to illinois to a treatment center in rockford uh which is actually right near me i live about an hour away from rockford illinois which is right near a hooters yeah Yeah. (laughs) okay go ahead and he goes to an adult camp and this is a camp or a treatment center where they treat men who are supposedly gay men because they don't outwardly say that it's a conversion camp they talk about men who have right. addiction issues men who have who are unfaithful to their wives and the way that you treat addiction is so much different than how you treat people who are going through mental health crisis or they overlap but are different than the way you treat people who are not good husbands like there's so many and it's just a giant not good husbands well, I, mean, what am I, <laughs> I like that there's a camp for that blanket. Some man around I'm going to send wife. you to the not good husband okay, camp. Okay, you're going to be a loose and loose and it around <laughs> yeah. for everyone except for your wife, except what you can give your kids. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Oh. And then we have the <laughs> shithead camp. We have So the, then that yeah. camp, um, <laughs> New Hope, Rockford, Love, God, whatever it is. Where do they have all this, where do they have all this, like, uh, land for camps? And are they, are they, are they not refrigerated? Are they air conditioned? Is it like a wilderness This kind one of is thing? not. There is not a well, lot wilderness for- in Rockford, Illinois to do that. I was um, going to say. Rockford's yeah. kind of, it's an armpit city. It's the punchline to a lot of jokes where I'm from. <laughs> um, like my, I'm not kidding you. I have a cousin who grew up near me in the same town that I did. Um, and she moved on to Florida. And you see all, like, the things about, you know, Florida man this or Florida hmm. man that. And she will send me links to those. And she goes, this is the most Rockford shit I've seen in my life. And it's in Florida. 
I'm buying a balloon from this. I'm like, nope. But so he's up there. That's where and we're then from. The council, yeah. and then the head of that church just got pulled for some shady stuff and touching people and going after young girls. So that oh happened, and they're very IBLP uh, connected. It's yeah. so that's a whole thing. During that time, it also comes out that Josh apparently had sexually assaulted an adult entertainer. Um, but those charges oh, were dropped. Wait, did I know that? But those one? charges were dropped. Uh, okay. She goes into how he had rough her up and tried to force her into doing things. Um, he met her at a strip club. She was making an appearance at a strip club, and he tried to get her to go back to a motel with him. And at the time, she didn't know like who exactly he was. And that was the whole thing. She ended up dropping that lawsuit for I don't know what reason, but like she speaks out heavily against him now. Right. I just love that he thinks he has the fame and the hot shitness to do that. I and where his fame comes from i know it's so in opposition to of, like the swinger that he thinks he is his parents can't keep it in his pants oh, oh like, my god right here right pay attention oh, to me i'm not yeah. sure because my parents are horny like no no <laughs> yeah. like, to know that you're what makes you so good i have 18 brothers to know that your fame is it coming gets, from your parents sex life that is the most terrifying thing in the world. Yeah. I still like to think that my parents are mm. like have the anatomy of like Barbie and Ken dolls. I have three younger siblings that came from the stork. They're virgins. Yeah. It's okay, Mo. Ugh. Right. <laughs> right. Ugh. Yeah. I don't like the reality of it either. But And um, <laughs> you know, once they leave the bedroom after that, Michelle's hair will have a divot in it because her hair, you would notice if she'd been well, messing all around. Spray. Okay, I, so we've got the Family <laughs> Research Council. We've got him on trial. What's his wife doing now? Like, was she they, like? Are they together? They are still, still together. She calls him multiple oh, times God. a day on the uh, through the county because <sighs> uh, she can't go in and see him. So there are multiple multiple calls a day, phone calls, video chats, and they're not expensive. And mm-hmm. through a Freedom of, of Information Act request, you can request these files. And we mm-hmm. see that Anna is, and you <gasps> clearly see her name and his name, um, that she's always calling to him and talking to him. She is really wrapped up in this cult. Her parents were actually stricter than the Duggars at first. Um, the Duggars, when they were raising their mm-hmm. kids, were always strict. Ugh. But apparently they weren't as strict as they are now. <laughs> They're like those wild duggers. And yeah. <laughs> Anna was born into this. She was raised into it. And I do have a sense of empathy mm-hmm. for her because or sympathy because she yeah. Yeah. knows no other life. This is what she was born into. Um obviously as an mm-hmm. adult you have to bear the consequences of your own actions, especially as a parent, you have to take care of your kids. But But that's brainwashing. You know it is. But it takes it's you very so multi- long. Yeah. It's very multifaceted. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Bonnie and I both had to get out of the church in different ways till you go, ah, oh, you know, you need distance. And that girl hasn't had any distance, and she yeah. might not for a long time. She has no way of providing for herself. Um, during the initial oh. scandal with Josh where everything came out that he was cheating, apparent, there are rumors that she actually wanted to divorce him mm-hmm. uh, because that is allowed biblically. It's not allowed in the IBLP, but it is allowed in the Bible, the IBLP is even stricter. Right. And Josh um, and Jim Bob said, you know what, if you, this would look horrible on the family. If you stay with my son, I will always make sure that you and your kids are taken care of. Which is a great way to dangle her in because she has no real way of bringing in her own money. She has right. seven children. That's what, what my next question was. What? Seven oh, little Josh, Josh kids? Oh, yeah. She has seven. Oh, um, one of them, funny enough, who was born in October. And then her birth was officially announced right before the trial. They did keep everything quiet for a while. Her name is Madison. Uh, funny enough, because the whole Ashley, Ashley Madison trial. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's not good. No, I feel horrible no. for that kid. Um, while the Duggars, <laughs> the Duggars may say that it's they're reclaiming a horrible part of their life and giving that name new meaning to their baby. No. But that little girl is going to Google mm. uh, Madison Duggar or they're going to Google yeah. Josh Duggar. And it's going to come up um, either article, just the Ashley Madison scandal articles, or it's going to come up, you know, articles about her birth. And it always mentions in every article her name and why her name raises eyebrows. That's why yeah. we don't name kids Hitler. We're not like we are going to reclaim this name. Right. Like you just, there are reasons. Wow. 
So they're obviously in this bubble. Do you think Anna is going to stick with him? As of right now, I don't. Um, I hope that she does. Part of why I take the approach on my account that I do is I try to look at things with a sense of compassion and understanding that things are very multifaceted. I don't think she's ever going to come across my stuff. Absolutely not. Yeah. Right. But I hope to influence other people to look at it in not a positive way, but more of an understanding every facet of a situation. Exactly. So let's say someone who knows me, who watches me, knows someone who knows someone who gets to Anna, just like a domino effect. Mm -hmm. Um, But I mean, she has no real way to take care of herself. So she is reliant on Jim Bob Michelle, but she's right now, there's a lot of reports saying how she is on the outs with Jim Bob. Well, I mean, if she had been a better wife, he would not have been doing this, Mo. That's what's scary is that hopefully they're not saying that to her. I hope not. But, I mean, that's what we come across all the time is that, yeah, people are, the women, it always comes back to the women. Any man can make his lunch. Any man can do whatever it is, but only you can fulfill that special marital need of intimacy. Lies. Your uh, son cheated. So now... And I gave him all the kids in the world and he still cheated. Lies. Right. And you just get to have sex mm. with him in a trailer. Okay, so now... In shed. They're in a shed now. What? <laughs> They're in a windowless shed. Who's in a shed? The st- uh, Anna and the kids. Across the street from the Duggars' main property, the big house. Oh, there oh is. that's where they live? They're in a yeah. shed? Like a tin metal shed that yeah. doesn't have windows. What? Um They are across the road. Yes, because that's Duggar property still. They own a lot mm-hmm. of prop around the, their main property with their home. Um, Jim Bob Michelle own a shit ton of land. A shit ton. So they and own all of that, but mom and seven kids are in a shed. Yes. And they make it homely. Anna has posted mm-hmm. pictures of what it's like inside the home. And she, I will give her credit. She did wonderful with the space that she had from what we can see. But, oh my yeah, God. They're across the, yeah. Wow. Okay. So when, when was he found guilty? Cause I thought we would hear how long his sentence would be like the next day. It's December 9th. He, uh, so the trial started okay. November 30th or the pre-trial hearing started November 30th, uh-huh. took about seven days of trial, and he was found guilty. He was announced guilty on December 9th. I, okay. like, I remember where I was. Like, some people talk yeah. about they remember where they were, were when they heard the O.J. Simpson. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm remembering the Josh Duggar trial. I know exactly where, where I was. Where were you? I was at work. Yeah. And I did not record while I'm at work. If I've ever posted anything while I was at work, it has been saved in like my drafts through TikTok. Um, mm-hmm. I got on and I recorded. I did not care that I was at work. I did not care mm-hmm. that you could see my company's logo on my shirt and my uniform. Yeah. Um, I just did not care. And I was posting all throughout the day and no one said shit about it because they knew better. Yeah. Um, right, right. But <laughs> we Listen, found out November if she 9th. doesn't do a TikTok, she's going to tell us all day. So let her well, do her I'm TikTok. A- I make great money off of TikTok, so my dad was like, we'll let her do it. Sorry, I digress into my happy days of, like, waiting tables. So sweet. So fun. Because you don't bring it home. Right. You don't bring it home. Yeah. And people go away. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, so I was at work uh, when I found out. And then the sentencing for federal trials usually takes about three or four months because then you have to go over the evidence itself. And the judge has to see... You know, it starts off at this baseline of, because we were hearing he was charged with two counts, um, receiving and possessing um, the child sex abuse material. And then it's review, it could be up to 20 years per count, but that could be up to. So then you start off with right, the yeah. very, very basic um, what he could be sentenced for. And then it adds on a little more. So it's like, okay, mm-hmm. well, if there was this circumstance that adds on two more years, if there was this circumstance, it adds on this. It's like building a Chipotle bowl of prison time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's always diarrhea at the end. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Oh. So what's the minimum, do you know, that he could get? Oh, my gosh. I have seen it broken down a few times, what the minimum is. I'm not sure, but I know it's not looking good because of the notoriety of what these specific files were and how right. everything was done. Um, and I know, do you know that he has to serve whatever they give him? He has to serve at least 80% of it. 
Mm-hmm. And he does oh, not have any good. options for early release due to good yeah. behavior. He does not have any options for parole early. Good. Like he right. has to serve at least 80%. He is going to get so fucked in jail. Like, I, oh my seriously. god! Well, because that's Him. all the sex he's ever wanted. No, no, no. But like, even people in jail, from what I hear, those the the people who are child molesters just get the shit beaten out of them. You are wrecked. More, you are absolutely yeah. wrecked. And like, I'm not someone who's going to sit here and like promote violence. But yeah. at the same time, I'm an Italian woman from the Chicagoland area, so do with that what we will. Right. But yeah. it's they will put him in protective custody. Uh, yeah. Because it's a very high profile, no one's a hugely high profile case. Yeah. Uh, then you have the fact that he is a celebrity in his own little regard, or he's in the public eye. And then I don't know if you guys have seen what this dude looks like, but he has a very punchable face. So he does. <laughs> he looks like he's been punched. Okay, let's jump quickly um, to some of the kids that seem to be drifting a little away from the flock. Oh, my girl, Joe. Because they make you smile, Mo. On your TikToks. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, they're breaking free. They're going rogue. I love a good rebel. I <laughs> love rebellious people. I mean, those Bermuda shorts are that she's wearing. How cheeky. That's Say weird. more. Say more. What does that mean? So there are two daughters that have very specifically gotten out. They're still very conservative oh. Christians, but they have gotten out. Uh, mm-hmm. Jill specifically has gone even on to People magazine to do interviews on how she's gotten away from the family and she disagrees with them wholeheartedly. Her husband, Derek, talks all the time about how Jim Bob is a liar. He's a thief. He is. Uh, Derek wow. has compared um, Jim Bob and Josh to Jeffrey Epstein in comments. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. So yeah. those are the ones that sued them. Yes, they're the ones that sued them. Okay. Um, all right. Jill sounded got her, Jill got her nose pierced. Uh, Jill. What? Dr- Jill drinks alcohol. Um, there's <laughs> pictures of her with pina coladas, the grown up kind. <laughs> I like that. Um, she has done modeling for, or like paid promotions for yeah. what we would consider modest swimwear, um, as opposed oh, to the totally. Duggars would consider lingerie. But she's in like the little, like the swim shorts, the looser ones, and like a tank top. There's one where yeah. she's in a slightly more covering tank top, but she's in like. They're like biker shorts that go down to like her knees. Uh, she wears <laughs> pants. She cut Risky. off like eleven inches of her hair at one point. Um, <laughs> Wait, she, let's pause and just listen. she wears I pants. Know. She wears pants. <laughs> oh, that's a huge so thing. She wears full, pants. That's She's so funny. A slut, full on slut. Uh, yeah. Um, wow. She admits to using birth control. Um, she claims mm. she says it's non hormonal, so that could be a myriad of other options and i really don't right. care to think about what she does or does not do to cause herself to not get pregnant like your mm-hmm. vagina baby yeah. you do you um yeah. and then her sister jill married jeremy who is very into fashion very into men's fashion being the sophisticated put together man so ginger wears a lot of really nice clothes uh there's a video of her going like shopping on rodeo drive with her one sister and thinking nothing about like spending three hundred dollars on a, like a coat or something. The sweet, sweet lure of the devil's weed. She money. She wears <laughs> eight Air Force Ones. She wears like shorts <laughs> and like little tennis outfits. Um, so like they. I can't believe away. that that is. She wears tennis outfits <laughs> like that is. <laughs> You know, extreme. That's huge. for that family. She, for that family, yeah. She also wow. got baptized. Again, for like the fourth time in her life, in a faith that was not her parents, which is, you know, a big giant yeah. up yours, mom and dad. Right, right. Crazy, <laughs> crazy. Yep. But it's so uh. funny how it's like, it's still, it's still church. And she's still there. But it's not there. mom and dad's church, so. Right. Her husband's oh a Calvinist. Oh gosh, that's funny. Um, so, I mean, he's still very religious. He's still very conservative. He's gone on tangents about the evils of the catholic church that's a whole other thing but like how they're horrible people all catholics are devil worshipers and they're and he goes into all that about i there's uh, jeremy's a whole other situation i but she's out but she wears tennis skirts okay so for the most part where do you find out this information Instagram. Um, so I will get information on what they're up to on Instagram. Yeah. And then uh-huh. I'm hopping on reading books. I am checking in with people who are coming out saying that they know the family. I do a lot of my research on their uh, 
belief system through the books that they read, through the book, yeah. through the books that they put out, through the books that they recommend. They have book recommendations on their uh, website, and then in the back of all their books, say if you like this book, then you can read. Here are some of the Duggar favorites, right. and I go through that, and I do a lot of reading on the internet. Um, wow. Yeah, I think it's always good to read like that first generation of material, like exactly what they're putting into their brain. And to see how it evolves. And, but it's yeah. a lot of research. Um, this is not something that I just jumped into. This is not something that, no. oh, there's this trial, so I'm going to, well, that is how I started talking about them. I was sick at home with COVID and, and I needed something to do, so I started talking when Josh got arrested. So I'm like, oh, I'll talk mm-hmm. about you know this on TikTok because I know about the family because I've, I've known this information for years. I just thought you know, it'll be something to do to pass the time while I'm on my quarantine. But then just more stuff starts coming out. As more stuff happens with the family, more people are willing to speak up. We get more information. And then that leads me to just research more and want to continue to do more. Mm. It sounds like I really don't have a life. I do. I have a... I yeah, sound no, it sounds like you have a life. We all have our obsessions. So, it's just been 19 years. But you weren't, you weren't raised evangelical. No. Were you? No, I was raised right. in a Catholic home. Um, and yeah. we weren't crazy Catholics by any means. I went to uh, religious education classes every Wednesday night. We went to mass on Sunday mornings. Mm -hmm. If my brother Mm -hmm. had a baseball tournament, then it was Sunday, then it was Saturday evenings. But so your devil worshiping was how many times a week? Exactly. Only twice. (laughs) Only twice. Mm -hmm. But I mean, we have the pictures of me in my little white dress for my first communion. Uh, Um, Right. They're really cute. They, they're cute. Um, I'm not a religious person Mm -hmm. by any means anymore. Uh, my parents still mm. are. They've relaxed a lot, but like I was allowed to wear pants to church. Like I could have even worn right if they were nice jeans that fit well. I was allowed to wear those. Um, yeah, I definitely have some memories of like interesting things that the people, my the teachers in my religious education classes would say. Um, uh huh. And I know that at one point, go on. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so the man who was in charge of that program. Uh, he once tried to tell all of us during an assembly one uh, Wednesday evening that the song All I Want for Christmas is You by Mariah Carey was about Jesus. (laughs) It's not. Yeah. (laughs) So there was that. Um, There was the time I was... It's Nick Cannon. (laughs) Right. (laughs) There was the time in the eighth grade. Um, This would have been two years after Hurricane Katrina. Uh, my youngest, it's Sunday morning. My religious ed classes were Sunday mornings, as were my youngest sisters. I'm like 14 years old, so my sister's like five or six. Um, I had to go pick her up after class was over, and we'd meet my mom across the street at church. So we do Sunday morning mass. And the bell rings, we're supposed to leave. And this woman, she's a tiny little Filipino woman with a mushroom cut of a haircut. Not mm-hmm. It's past a bowl cut. It is a mushroom. She looks like right. a character from Mario Kart. <laughs> and she goes off and tells us about how the reason why Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans and the reason why there's so many earthquakes in California is because that's where all the gay people are and God wants to wipe out the gays. Oh, that's and right. if we want mm-hmm. to sure. not die by natural disaster, then we should not be living in the places where the gay people are. Oh. And I got up and I turned. I'm not. I told him like I'm not listening to you. Spew this shit. And I got to go pick up my sister. Like I'm not oh, letting good. a six year old who is used to being you. picked up walk across. No, absolutely not. She'd be terrified. And she goes, "You're not leaving until I tell you to leave." And I look at her like you know, you're not dismissed. I don't care what the bell says. And I look at her and I go, "Watch me. You're gonna <laughs> get in trouble. You're she's like you'll get in trouble." You're. I look at her. I go, "Go ahead." Try to get me in trouble. Let's go. Um, and I ended up on mushroom. And I head. ended up telling the priest uh, what she had said, uh, whether or not mm. that's what the Catholic Church believes or what the priest said. He agreed that that's not something that she should have said. Um, I could talk to him after mass, and she was not teaching the next year. Ooh, good for you. Tell me not to pick up my little sister. Uh, Ooh, yeah. And yeah. I was still friends. And that was what. Oh my. God. Pat Robertson did the whole gay oh, yeah. thing so she was obviously listening to an evangelical she also used to bring in her guitar and have us sing songs in class that yep. were not that's but they were not catholic <laughs> songs they were not any song that we would have learned from uh nothing that we would have learned right. uh, at mass um oh my gosh what's that one song our god is an awesome he ran from i yep. up. rich mullins yes. she was she was she was a plant, an evangelical plant, to get the sinful Catholics 
Wow. I we have saying that. And, that. and I can still do the little hand motions and I hear it and I want to vomit, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's a, uh, uh, you might find this interesting. We did a, I, mean, I don't know if we've talked about this before, but we had one of our really good friends in high school. Um, she married a guy. He was a Baptist pastor. Now they switched to Catholic. Yeah. They went Which to is, Catholic. It's very unusual. It's so unusual. That's, yeah. It really is. My whole family isn't um, Catholic. That's not how everything started. My dad's family is Catholic as Catholic is. And that's how they've always been. And that's how it's going to stay. And that's just how it is. Mm-hmm. On my mom's side mm-hmm. of the family, my grandmother was raised born an Italian Catholic woman. Everything's all great and dandy. Like, she fit the bill and everything was great. She gets divorced from her first husband. He leaves her and their son, my uncle. And she meets my grandfather, who moved up to Chicago from Texas. He was a Southern Baptist. And um, there was, you know, talks about what would they do? Would they move back? My grandmother goes, well, I am not leaving because her parents lived up here in Chicago and they barely yeah. spoke English. She was their only child. She's like, I'm not leaving my parents. Absolutely not. Um, and pa- my grandfather, Colin Papa was like, okay, well, I guess we're staying up here then. And there were no, there were a few Southern Baptist uh, churches up nearby them where they were staying, but my grandmother saw mm-hmm. their beliefs and she goes, hell no, absolutely not. We are no. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, not happening. And then somehow, if you're a nut job enough to be a Southern Baptist way up there, you've got to have like a very special wackadoo. Uh, and the yeah, kind of I am very good. I've become friendly with another creator on TikTok who is a Southern Baptist who lives two hours away from me. And she was raised her entire life. Oh, is in she area. practicing? No, she's not. She it, describes herself oh, okay. as a. Um, Oh my gosh, it's not atheist. It's not happy person. It's not atheist. It's agnostic. <laughs> She's an agnostic. agnostic. She's considers herself an agnostic yeah, atheist. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, she works us. great we in de- she in that. works great in posting about the evils of the Southern Baptist Church and deconstructing from that. Um, yeah, but yeah. I mean, it's definitely up here. It is definitely up here. And mm-hmm. they somehow decided that the happy medium between being a Southern Baptist and being a Catholic was Lutheran. Sure. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But no, I do have that bit of a background. Wow. That crazy woman. I. Her name's Josie. I don't remember her last name, but she's a little Filipino woman. She has a white husband, and I can see her mushroom bowl cut with the horrible caramel highlights. I oh my god! <laughs> when I go to hell, she will be the you first did person this, greeting you me. You did us proud. You did us <laughs> proud that day. Okay, so who? Tell me who are your favorite Duggars? My favorite Duggars. I. I love Jill for her ability to speak out. She was always... I knew it. She was always very quiet. No one expected her to be the one that it was going to escape. Everyone thought it was going to be Jessa, mm-hmm. who is actually now like the mm-hmm. unofficial mouthpiece for the family, and she's all up with her yeah. parents. But Jill was so quiet and sweet, and everything's great. And then she's the one that spoke out. I give her so much credit. Um, yeah. She was just taking it all in. She waited yeah, for, and putting the pieces together. And she waited for the right time for her to get out. And then she waited for the right time to tell her story. She hasn't told the whole thing yet. And mm-hmm. her process of going through everything is mm-hmm. all her own. Um, mm-hmm. But I'll be honest. it's She's waiting to sign that TLC um, show contract. <laughs> She should get her own show. I'm going to look then, her up first on Instagram. But I'll be honest, like, yeah, because I want to see her long bike it's shorts. Like, I'm, oh, that picture's from like uh, two years ago. But if you just search, <laughs> it'll be new to if me. You search, uh, if you Google <laughs> yeah. Jill uh, Jill Dillard or that's her married name or Jill Duggar swimsuit, it'll pop up. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, swimsuit. But you're expecting, I you just, know, there's something covenant eyes to tag you. Hi, <laughs> neck. But there's something amazing just about a. She was able to get out of that, and you know, maybe some of her other siblings are able to get out of it. And part of their healing process is not to speak out. Or that's they don't want the attention. Right. That's everyone's own. True. It's healing is not the same on everyone. And I'm proud of her that she's taken yeah. the yeah. steps to do what is best for her. That being said, I also love that it involves spilling some Duggar tea, and I get to find out more dirt on them. Yes. Oh. <laughs> like, first of all, how many TikToks Duggar do you do tea. a day? Because you seem to always have information. So I do information pretty much whenever I get it. Um, at the time of recording right now, I'm on a little bit of a break. Everything that I've been posting for the past week has been pre-recorded. So I will literally sit down, and if I have, like, a few hours, I will do my makeup on camera because I like little, the transition videos, the the transformation videos, mm-hmm. and then I'll shoot like 15. 
they're not always me talking. Sometimes it's me using trending sounds uh, to kind of help get a point across. Because as much as I want to educate people, yeah. I also like the entertainment value. If I can use the entertainment to kickstart the education, I'm even better with it. Um, I'm taking a little break so just to not have to worry about responding to everything right away. But I will... Yeah. Okay, so for the people who don't know, like me, does that mean you like put your makeup on in front of us and we get to see before and after? So I start yeah. at the beginning with just my bare face. Uh-huh. Um, some uh-huh. videos you see little clips of like me blending in my foundation or filling in my uh-huh. eyebrows. And then at the end, whenever you know the beat drops, whenever the big part of the song is, you see the full picture. You see the full everything. Oh, cool. Yeah. I do that, too. It looks the same from beginning <laughs> till when I'm revealed. Wait, but, but remember yeah, that I, one time I you did this all night. Remember <laughs> that one time you did a video like that and somebody said, are you taking a flight? <laughs> what? <laughs> Me? You did a video like that and someone's comment was, are you going on an airplane? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Someone said. I'm like, what? Some of the comments, I can't <laughs> even. So we can go all day long on the dra- ta- TikTok drama, which there was a lot today in my corner of the I've, world. But I've there's, a bit of it there's somebody it's... who does makeup on YouTube, and she does like the half face makeup, and she yes. did Adele and Kim Kardashian, and it's Nikki so... tutorials. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god, fairy. They're. I mean, there's what? talent out there. There's talent. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Okay, so I, so I just do that because it's fun, and I'll sit in, it is, in front yeah. of my camera, my phone, and I'll record for like for a few hours, and then I'll save all of it so that when I know that I need a break, when I know that my life's just about to get crazy and I can't be posting as often, I have everything saved in my drafts, and I go, okay, click, post, done. Cool, yeah. yeah. All right, so where can people find you, Mo? If they're interested in knowing every, like, we did not even touch on all the stuff you know no this is awesome where where can they find you and just while away the hours so you can find me on tiktok my uh username is mo period makes period magic with a k at the end so that last magic is spelled m-a-g-i-c-k and mo is spelled m-o-e i apologize with the e okay so m-o-e period Mm -hmm. M A K E S period. Okay. M A G I C K. How do you spell awesome. period? <laughs> okay. So what we'll do is we'll link that below our episode too. All right. But I cannot wait to hear how long this Josh idiot gets yeah. because it's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. I feel. And- I feel bad for his kids because dealing with any oh, parent yeah. who's incarcerated, oh. Um, oh, I do yeah. feel bad for Anna in a way because, I mean, they apparently really did at the end kind of expect that he was going to end up being found guilty, but or they were preparing for it. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, the second that the judge read out the guilty verdict, her entire life changed as she knew it, and yeah. she's going through an identity crisis in a way, and I do feel bad for that. I can have the empathy for that. Um, yeah, yeah. Growing up in that, what I would see if I was doing it, like, she was much more strict, you know, had a stricter upbringing where she was raised to be that wife. Like, that is it. And then have those kids. And then if something like that happened, it would be like, you know, there are trials and tribulations. And through all of the trials, Jesus will be shown through and he will be praised and so like you stick in those hard times because you really think that that's God's will and it's really gonna everyone's gonna see the world's gonna see she has she doesn't have a fighting chance with that kind of mindset and my guess is she's got to be dealing with anger right now that she doesn't feel that she's justified to have in, mm-hmm. in so one of sad. her books, in one of the books that the Duggars promote, um, this, by the same people who wrote the Detroit After Child book, they talk about how God wants a woman to stay with her husband who is not a good provider, is mean to her, it is crude. Um, they mm-hmm. flat out say that they would prefer a woman be with a horrible husband and a horrible father than to, excuse me, step out and make money and provide and do that for herself. Yeah, um, God yeah, wants her yeah. and her kids to suffer because that may be part of His will. Um, See, she also talked. She also mm-hmm. talked. 
when she was first interviewed on uh, when they rebooted 19 Kids and Counting as Counting On after the Josh Duggar trial when everything came out about Ashley Madison and then him touching his uh-huh. sisters because those came out within three months of each other. So the show got canceled and then they brought it back. In one of Anna's first interviews, and it breaks my heart to watch it, she's sobbing and she's crying about how she had every inclination where, you know, obviously she was mad and she could have ran, but she knew that she did not want to turn a mess into a disaster. And she leaned on God. That was it because she did, those were her uh, words. She did yeah, not want right. to turn a mess into a disaster. Yeah. And I mean, that actually makes sense. I mean, that's the best you can do. Mm-hmm. And she has kids. What are your choices? Yeah. Holy it's shit. heartbreaking. Okay. So who, who do you think is really going to be a black sheep out of that family? Because again, we're looking at numbers and we've got to have a few gays in there. We've got to have a few more rebels. And then we'll close up this episode. Uh, Jill is definitely the black sheep because she has gone out and the media is speaking out against her family. Um, Ginger mm-hmm. is definitely black sheep enough because she posted video of her being dipped into the baptismal font um, and giving her testimony mm-hmm. as to why her husband's faith is the exact right one for her and why she chose not to stick with her family. So that's definitely a black sheep situation. Um there are rumors that one of the sisters, Joanna, and her husband, Austin, are stepping away from the IVLP, that this was, that the trial was the last straw, um, yeah. and that they want n- not much to do with it. So we can see that stepping right. out. Um, there are rumors, as opposed to definitely at least one Duggar who people think is gay, Um Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say necessarily which one it yeah, is because exactly we it's won't not know. yeah right. it's all speculation. There's no real actual rumors. It is Jim Bob. You heard it here. It is Jim Bob. <laughs> <laughs> There's no rumors specifically like oh so and so was caught right. with someone or maybe this. It's just the way that people typecast gay people. It's down to personalities mm-hmm. and why people yeah. say oh well look you're gay you're like this when it's not. Yeah. Um, but there's yeah. rumors that there's at least one, um, and the reason that said individual was sent to the alert training camp, the residential camp that the Duggars send their boys to mm-hmm. was oh for a, uh, de- uh, like a D de- not deconstruction, like a deconversion type thing. It was like a conversion camp that they ran it that way. Right, right. Um, again, it's not guaranteed which one it is. I'll exactly. But and there's definitely again, that. we're talking. Yeah, it's the numbers. I it's mean, shocking just, to me that they will talk to the media still. You know, I mean, because my reaction would be, shut it down. Where can I go where no one lo- knows me? Yeah. Yeah. But if that's how you know how to make money, I guess it's also a well, conundrum. And if you grew up on TV, which I guess they did. That's what they know. That's all that these kids know is how to be on TV yeah. and smile for the camera. Um, there's a lot of stuff going around saying that Jim Bob and Michelle are withholding funds, um, from their kids or like cutting them out of wills and stuff like that, uh, losing all financial Mm -hmm. backing. And if they speak out against the family, if they say anything against them, so because the whole family, all they know is media. The only way that they can control that Jim Bob and Michelle can really make their money is through media and speaking engagements because of their Mm -hmm. fame through the media. Um, and then the way they set things up. Sure, the sons, one of them has their, a few of them have their pilot licenses. Maybe they own like contracting businesses. <laughs> well, the one just, um, we real. found out got into a plane crash. Um, oh. But have, they have their contracting businesses and they do real estate, but they are lost without the backing of mommy and daddy. And it's all throughout mm-hmm. media. Yeah. And I'm sure that they get some of their business. So when they can say, oh my gosh, John David flew my plane or, uh, this one did my landscaping or that one remodeled my kitchen or I'm sure there's some of that. Right. I mean, it's, it's Arkansas. Everyone does the contracting and all that. Yeah. So that's, it's Arkansas. That's what their buildup is. It's all yeah. the people who do that handiwork. So they wouldn't really much have much of anything without the show. And all they know how to do is make money off of the show. So they still need that backing from mom and dad. And that's yeah. how yeah. they're keeping their controls, holding the purse strings over their heads. Man, they've just grown up with so much fear. And like a lot of our listeners, I mean, all of us grew up with, you know, delightful mind fucks that we still unpack. But that's some intense Which stuff. Is what, yeah, that's, that's not crazy. feeling safe. That's a very yeah, yeah. unsafe feeling. Which is why, I mean, mm-hmm. I'll make fun of her. I'll, 
I don't want to make light of certain situations, but I'll try to prevent present stuff in a way that other people may find humorous to get their attention drawn in. But I really try to right, educate yeah, people right. and then hopefully influence someone to have some sort of compassion or understanding or empathy, not white people of their responsibilities, mm -hmm. but to understand what is all mm -hmm. truly going on. Because we, it's been proven, you are more likely to be able to show compassion towards someone you know versus someone you do not know. Because the Duggars are in the public eye, we feel like we know them. Because we hear stories mm -hmm. on TikTok, because we hear the news mm -hmm. articles, we feel like we know them. We feel like we have that personal connection to them, even though we really don't. And if I can influence someone to maybe learn to have a little bit of empathy or a little bit of understanding towards their situation, they may be able to recognize yeah. abuse and religious trauma in someone else down the street. And then they can really get to know that person and really show that empathy towards them. And that could actually help them. I don't expect any viewers on TikTok to be able to be the one that breaks one of the Duggars free, but we can use that as a tool to prevent this from ever happening again um, and to help other people who may mm -hmm. be in their community going through this and they may not realize it. Yeah, that's, that's great. And, you know, I agree wholeheartedly when I see people come up on my things saying, you know, I knew by the time I was six that all the Bible was BS, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, you know, you're negating people's upbringings, and you're also saying that everyone should be able to figure it out, and therefore indoctrination isn't real. And our whole goal is to be like, there's indoctrination, and we've got to stop this indoctrination. So, you know, it's a weird flex when when people are like, well, I would have just walked out if I was a Duggar. Okay, no, sure you would. that's okay. not how, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's not how it works, you um, know. Indoctrination and fear are a thing. I, it's weird because people say, well, if I was a Duggar, well, you very obviously are not because you're not thinking like them. And to understand right, yeah. how they think and their upbringing, you have to, and like, why things are, you have to think of stuff in their perspective. And I like to remind people all the time that it is a great privilege that you don't think that way, that you can't wrap your mind around yeah, that. Exactly. Uh, there were some people yeah. obviously who have never been a part of that, who can understand that I was never a Christian fundamentalist, but I can understand it because I actively try to put myself in their shoes and it's a scary place, but it's a necessary place that some people have to be. And I thank mm -hmm. my lucky stars right. every day that I was not born into that. And I recognize that because yeah. I have a platform. I have an opportunity to speak out against it. I'm going to because it's not an upset. It's not about an obsession with the Duggars. It's not. It's because I've seen this kind of stuff happen. There was a very, very fundamentalist Baptist um, family that went to my elementary school when I was growing up. Um, they didn't homeschool their kids and I'm watching them get out and, as adults, girls that I went to school with. And right, it is the most right. amazing thing in the world. And yeah. let's say her name is Kelsey. It wasn't, but to see Kelsey getting out of that, um, people think that it's just people isolated off on their little rural far farm homesteads out in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by a yeah. bunch of yeah. bumpkins and it's really not i grew up in the suburbs of chicago no it's not yeah right right absolutely it's everywhere. everywhere well we're gonna end up this episode thank you so much for all this um thank you so knowledge so of what a family what if unbelievable oh my gosh. thank you for having me and to all, all our people we just say don't be um a josh now we usually say don't be a shit pile but the Josh is is They're close synonyms. enough yeah <laughs> thank, thank you guys so bye much. ladies <laughs> <laughs>